They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It is your boy, the Squirrel. And uh, today I'm doing a quick little Fred Dibna piece. I love Fred Dibna. He's such an amazing, amazing person, and I really loved learning about him. And I got all kinds of people commenting about the little piece of wood in the chimney and how the, you know he's going to re-erect the, the, the scaffold. I learned all that afterwards. So, like, I understand all of it now, but I, I didn't know when I first watched him. And uh, this is a clip I've never seen. This is uh, Fred Dibna, How to Stop Smoking. So uh, we're going to watch this one real quick. I am going to get to the Industrial Age Part 2. I did Part 1, and someone asked me to do Part 2. I was like, sure, I'll do it. You know, I, I'd like to go through all of those. I think there's six of them. So we'll get to those, but tonight... Um, for time constraints and making sure I get all the, uh, um, all the material that I want to get out, I am going to go with the shorter one tonight. And this is Fred Dibna, how to stop smoking. So let's get into this and let's see what my friend Fred has to say about, uh, smoking and how, of course we could stop it. Here we go. I've got a new assistant down down the yard there, Neil, who, who's quite a wonderful man, you know, he's a man of independent means, so I don't need to pay him a big wage. <laughs> he's very keen on the steam business, you know, his father were a steam engine looker after her at a waterworks, and uh, he took early retirement from his, <laughs> his job with Wigan Bus Department, uh, and at first Sue said to me, Oh, yeah, he's too intelligent to bother with steeplejacking, you see, and, and of course he's too quite a shine to it, you know, he, he likes it. I don't think it has to do with intelligence, but it's more about um, bollocks. There's only one fly in the ointment. Uh, one of my neighbours is taking a, a dislike to my steam engine activities, and uh, he's had the council round about pollution and smoke and noise and all of this. But you know, I, I can't see that I'm doing any harm. You know, one thing that tells me this is the, the wild life round here is actually flourishing. There's been squirrels round here this last summer. You know, there are also this last summer were two woodpeckers nested in the tree nearest to the steam engine shed. Now, my boiler inspector is an ornithologist, and, and he, he act, when I told him about the woodpeckers, he actually came back after tea with his wife and a party of, of ornithologists to look at these bloody woodpeckers with the binoculars. So what was all the noise and the aggro. I mean, it is a bit loud over there, Fred. <laughs> Fred had some really bad traits when I first met him. He was terribly self-centered and thoughtless. And a silly example is he would go into the pub and we'd be with a group of people and he wouldn't buy around. He was so busy talking about himself that he wouldn't get his money out and buy around, and I used to feel so angry with him. The other things that really sort of upset me because I could see that they were damaging him were his bad habits of drinking and smoking. And um, I eventually persuaded him that to cut down on his smoking, and of Fred's own free will, he said, I'm going to give up. And to encourage him and support him, I bought him presents for weeks every day that he didn't smoke. And then I had a relapse. I went to look at a chimney stack at Great Arwood near Blackburn, and the demolition man got out of his car and he got two in his mouth and one of them American flamethrower lighters and put and he lit them. And before I knew it, I had the thing in between my lips. And I thought, I shouldn't be doing this, you know. And anyway, I thought, I might as well smoke the damn thing now. This will definitely be my last cigarette. And when I came home at tea time, I said to Sue, like, I said, I, you know, I have had a smoke today, you know, and I explained the tale. Like, very upset, you see. And from that day to this, I've never had a cigarette. I think I am a slightly reformed character from what I used to be. My idea being a basic Victorian is to, you know, the woman's role is to do the washing up and cook the tea, and I'll go out and earn the bread, you see, but Sue has different ideas. Uh, 
you know, she says that I should do a bit of washing up, like, you know, which I have actually been trained now, and, and I am, I do occasionally. <laughs> been trained now like that do a bit of washing up i never ever did before you know uh, I, I don't find it's good it cleans your fingernails anyway you know when you're doing it oh that was my buddy fred i just could listen to this guy talk forever um i enjoyed it i enjoyed uh, just listening to him just chat i think it's funny i was thinking halfway through i'm like oh i get it it's about the smoke he's producing in the shop but no that was just kind of a little lead-in he actually stopped smoking and then he had that one cigarette with the guy with the american flamethrower and then um after they were done with that he went right back to not smoking so good for him uh but uh, stop being a cheap uh, cheap son of a gun there uh freddy buy some drinks i should have anyway uh that was just a um, a fun little piece. The the volume on the video is down a little bit, so I'll try to bring it up in post production if I can. But um, you know, I think it's cool. I think it's funny when he was talking about this guy and how overqualified he is, and he's too smart to take down steeples. Like, no, as long as he's crazy, he's fine. But um, God bless you, Mister Dibna. It was fun to dig back in for just a little bit. I will get around to the industrial age uh, pieces soon, and uh, get those off for you guys. I hope you guys are having a great week, and I'll catch you very soon. Rest in peace, Mr. Dibna. It's a pleasure as always. Scrub.